In this set of videos, we'll be talking about the constants and properties nodes. For more information about the specific node and its properties, you may access our node list in the Amplify Shader Editor wiki. Let's start by creating a new Amplify Surface Shader. Create a new material to assign to the shader. Double-click the material to open it in the Shader Editor. Add the material to an object. We'll be working in Material Mode for the next tutorials. If you're not familiar with Material and Shader Mode, or how the Shader Editor works, we recommend starting with the Introductory Tutorials or Manual, links in the description. You may press Shift and Space to maximize or minimize the Docked Canvas tab. I'll keep the window docked, as it will allow you to see the full extent of the workflow. Make sure animated materials are enabled, so you may see animated shader effects on the objects through the scene view. Start by adding one float node to the canvas through clicking while holding its shortcut key, 1. You may check our helper window for additional information, including node and editor shortcuts. The float node is the most commonly used node of this type, and it outputs a single float value. We'll be setting most of our constants as material properties, so that they can be previewed in the scene view without needing to compile it every time as you would with the constant. We can set it as a range float by defining different values to its min and max. Let's set the maximum to 1, keeping minimum at 0. Connect it to the albedo and compile the shader. As you can see, we can now fine-tune the color of the object in between the grayscale range of 0 to 1. Head one integer node to the canvas. The integer node simply outputs a single integer value. The color node slightly differs from the last two, since it outputs a float4 value containing four float components, R, G, B and A. These stand for red, green, blue and alpha. Connect the RGBA output to the albedo input and compile the shader. This node contains a color picker to represent its values, so we can quickly turn our material red. Let's make use of the previously added nodes. Set the integer to 1 and connect it to the metallic input, as we currently do not require a float value for it. This will ensure that our object is fully metallic. Now connect the float node output to the smoothness input, then compile. Now we can control the smoothness with the slider. Also, if you want to use HDR values, you need to select the color node and open its node parameters. Click the plus sign besides the attributes, select HDR from the drop list and compile. 